Hi guys, my name is Anika. I am 25 and I am a TV presenter, actor and a screenwriter. I am the recently evicted housemaid from the BBN Ninja season 3. Um, I've always been a fan of the BB, the Big Brother franchise. I've always been watching them from the ones in the US, Canada, Nigeria, Africa. It was usually Africa and I've always wanted to, you know, be a part of that reality, you know, treatment. And uh, I followed, I went last year, funny enough, I went last year, I didn't get picked and I'm like, target next year. And I went this year and, whoo, it was a fight to the end. <laughs> but we made it, yes. Yeah. So um, I've always, I was waiting, after last year, I was just waiting, when is it going to be out? When are they going to start doing the next one? And that was how I got to find out. So, yeah. <laughs> Back to the question. Yes, um, when I got into the house, we've been waiting for so long to get into, I personally have been waiting for so long to get into that house. But when I got in, what? 19 other people with their different personalities, different madness, and everything was just overwhelming. The first night, the first night I got there, actually, we got fake evicted. Whew. Yo, you don't want to know what that did to me, man. I was, I, I, we, we picked um, numbers on the stage, so I picked um, a number that doesn't have a bed in the main house. So Big Brother announced that we were evicted for that time, and I think I got like instant headache, like migraine from nowhere just flew into my brain. I'm like, how would I come all this way and not even get to sleep in this house? I was so sad. I was shattered. Yes, that's the word. I was really shattered. And then we found out, oh, we're not really evicted. And then to come out of that whole shattered mood was, was kind of hard for me. So that, that first night was really difficult. It was really difficult. And then we had to keep our voices down. It was, it was a lot. Yeah, funny enough, anyone you tell, I'm going to the people's house and say, oh, do this. This, let me, this is be a strategy. Make sure they're like, how many human beings do I want to be in that house? But my strategy basically was just survive. I wasn't planning to, oh, go and start something, go and ally with this, ally with this, just survive. Whatever's thrown at you, just survive. Find a survivor, just be in your survivor mode and just do what you need to do to survive. So that was just it. Thank you for your vote of confidence in my brain skills. And yes, I think I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm quite brainy, but I think I, I try to, yeah, I might overanalyze things, but that's where you get to see the bigger picture because when you, if you just look at something on the surface, you'd never see what you know, lies underneath and then you might make mistake on that notion. So yes, um, I would like to think that I'm pretty intelligent. I'm not Einstein or anything, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty good with my brain. Um, that, that, that happened in the first week. I, I, I can't even remember that. Um, what happened? We were paired. We, 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 it was um, the Valentine week. So when we saw the roses, I was like, okay, maybe this is just a Valentine thing and everything. And then Big Brother said, um, no, it's a strategic partnership. I was like, okay, maybe for the task that we wanted to do that day or something. So, and I was the first girl to pick, and I'm like, oh, great. And then I looked at everybody on the chair. There were, of course, a lot of people crossed your mind. But then at that point, I was like, what did I really need at that point? Who would fulfill what I needed at that point? And I thought, okay, there's... Um, Rico, there's Angel, um, Angel there's um, Beto, and there's um, D1, who were the guys I've spoken to the most in that short period of time. So I didn't know the other guys. So those were the people I would think, okay, I can actually work with these people. And then I said, okay, let me start with D1 then. I went to D1. Funny enough, when I was walking to D1, he was just being funny. I was like, oh my God, this dude is going to do something hilarious or something crazy. But my God kept saying, just go, just keep going, just keep going. And then I went and you know, what happened happened, which was very funny to me because I, it was all joke and everything. But people started saying, "Yeah, sorry, ah, sorry, ah, this thing we do, I do know." I'm like, "Why are we mad at this? Like, why are we mad at this?" And then doing and I, I just love to. If you notice who I am, I'm someone who, for the fun of it, just likes to blow things out of proportion. And you, I'm just joking, but I just make it look like, "Oh, it's a whole big deal," so that we can just banter and laugh about it. But yeah, I wasn't really. He did what he did. He might say it was a joke. It might have come from a place of, you know, honesty. But I'm like, whatever happened, happened. It's fine. We weren't meant to be. Obviously, I would have left the first week if we were. So it's it's all good. Um, I wish him the best. I, I'm not really excited that I won't want it to replay itself, but or repeat itself rather. But it is what it is. I coped because funny thing that that rejection actually helped me cope because everybody gets rejected at some point in life. And that builds character, that builds some kind of immunity. And for that happening to me that first week, yeah, for the first few minutes or first few hours, or the, even up to the next day, I was, I was, you know, sad. I was like, why would this happen to me? 
why I'm sure this thing is everybody's talking about this and everybody's probably laughing, but then I'm like, is it because your own is public? Every other person has been rejected sometime in life. So it just helped me cope with the fact that life will not always go your way and it's fine. I forgave D1 even though I kept bringing, the only problem I had with that was when he kept saying, I made you trend, I made you trend. I'm like, don't try to act like you did me a favor by that. It was fucked up, it was not nice. It, it might have been from a place of, it might have been jo a, a joke you were trying to play, I don't know, but it's fine. I, I, I forgive you whatever your reasons are because at the end of the day, we all came to the house to, you know, get our chance at the first five million. So you are always going to do what is in your best interest. And uh, maybe I wasn't in your best interest at that point in time. I'm not going to hold that against you. So it's fine. And we're good now. I wish him everything good. And I hope we, we you know, shout out to D1. I hope we can talk and laugh at some point. First of all, the word is strategic partnership, not romantic partnership or marriage. And in my own philosophy going to that house, I didn't want to bring in feelings because Yes, feelings is good. It's good to help you stay centered and everything, but also it's, it could work against you like this. So when I, I was going into the house without a plan to be romantically involved, with anyone, I'm not saying if it happened, it wouldn't happen, but it wasn't what I was going there to look out for, to scout for a romantic interest. So when we, I got paired with Rico and the whole um, situation with which we got paired, which was by default because he wasn't picked and I was rejected, so we had to be together. Then he, I felt like... He was, you know, pressured by the other couples in the house to turn, you know, the partnership into something else, especially the room we were in. Everybody was sleeping on their partner's bed. Everybody was, you know, about to have a baby that night. Like, it was, it was almost crazy. And the pressure got to him, and he started... Because prior to the partnership, I haven't really discussed with Rico, so I didn't really know who he was, or he didn't even know who I was. So I was like, let's start from there. Let's get to know each other. Let's find our connection. It mustn't be romantic, because trust me, romance is played out in that house. It's played out, and I didn't want to be a part of that. So let's find some other thing we can connect on. But um, I'm, not, I'm not mad at him, because, I mean, you just can't help what you feel. But I was just trying to make sure that his feelings were in check. His feelings were not going to jeopardize our game in the house because when I said it was a strategic partnership and whatever happens to your partner happens to you, then I knew that, okay, Rico is my priority in this house. He's the guy I have to look out for the most and I have to check his feelings. Even if it was towards me, towards any other person, Rico was who I needed to guard in the house. So I wasn't mean to him. It was just tough love because I knew what he needed in that house was not to be romantically involved with anybody, especially when it's going to look fake because you're pressured into doing that. So I wanted him to just let take the feelings out of the game because like i said you don't mix business with pleasure you don't you know shit in your doorstep basically you don't take your food to the toilets you just keep them apart and i hope it works i hope he really has known that romance is now the only way to go in the big brother house the best moment um just being there like knowing that oh i've watched this for so long and now i'm here out of so many people every day was just good some days that yeah, you have low points and some days it's, some days are stressful but every time i look at i look and hear big brother's voice and i hear him coming like wow i'm really here so those were really really good times and those were my every time big brother called my name was a high moment for me um i didn't have a low low moment because, um, like I said, being there was just good enough for me. Just being in the house, being able to, you know, be in that situation was good enough for me. But there are some days that you just feel down, especially when you have 24 hours to do nothing but just think. So there are some days that you, especially when you, you know, get into fights with people or you, you know, are confronted or something doesn't go your way, it just makes you feel sad. But I wouldn't say there's any specific moment that I, I you know, was a low low for me. So I don't think I have any of those. Who do I see within the show? Um, I see Miracle within the show. Miracle and, okay, the pair. I see Mito going far in the game and Miracle possibly emerging the winner because I always nominated them because I knew they were strong. I knew because when I was in the game, I was all about me. But now I'm out, I'm like, this guy, could, yeah, he really has what it takes. And I love um, his ideas on what to do with the money. Miracle is a very smart person. Miracle is funny in a very weird way. Um, yeah, I feel he's determined enough to reach that 45 million, and I, I think he might get it. Also, Toby, Toby Bakari, yes. He is also a strong contender in the house. Now, because re um, recently he's beginning to be more fun, more open, you know, more himself, and yeah, he's a good leader, so I think that would make, help him closer to the, the, the 45 million. And then who I might want to win, I also would want Rico Suave to win. Um, as much as 
he can be recourse to Ave sometimes. I love his, his dream. I love his drive in the house, why he wants to win the money. Um, he, w he wants to invite him, you know, go into helping autistic kids. And I love that, that, that um, side of him. I love how passionate he is about the, the downtrodden and those who have no one to fight for them. So based on doubt, and because he's also generally sweet, so I would also want Rico to win. So those are my top three, Rico, Suave, Miracle, and Toby. They might win. They have a good chance. Hi, guys. My name is Anika, and I just want to talk. Um, I want to talk about how people are so shallow-minded to the struggles of others. Um, people think because they, they got lucky in life, they feel they can ride and talk down on people who are battling some certain challenges, me especially with my acne and other people with their other insecurities like people who are overweight, people who are too skinny or ev anything you're battling with. And then people who think they have it all would come out and feel they understand your struggle and can tell you how to act or how to feel. Especially when I was in the house when I was battling with acne, which was um, really a tough time for me because it was, it was, it was, it was the, the height of it. And then people who would say, oh, because of that, you're not taking care of your skin. Do you know, you don't even know what causes the acne. You don't know the challenges a person is going through. Or you don't know why the person is overweight. You don't know anything about the struggle. But then you would come out to talk ill of the person. I don't think that is right. I think that is so insensitive. And it just shows how shallow and ignorant you are and how, how low you can go to try to put someone when they're down. Put, you want to put them down and shove them to the bottom of the earth just because they're not where you think they should be. Do not judge anybody until you've walked at least one meters in their shoe. Like, you can't even tell what the person is going through. And then you, behind your phone, or because you think you have some kind of fan base or some kind of platform to talk, and then you come out and trash the person. I don't think it's right. I think it's very insensitive. And I think anyone who is doing that should please desist from doing that because you're not only affecting their, their mental state, you're also affecting their brand as well. So please be very mindful of how you put people down. You got lucky doesn't mean you're above whoever isn't. I want to rant on that. And then um, please, people shouldn't, um, especially when it comes to the voting, as much as you're supporting a particular person or a particular housemate in the house, you don't need to put other housemates down just so that person can get up. Instead, just look for how to shine, make the person shine brighter. You don't have to dim other person's light to make it. That's how it might work in science, but in the real world, it's not, it doesn't even, it speaks ill of the person you are supporting. Um, especially when um, a lot of things came out about me that weren't even true, and I was like, that is just negative um, strategy because it doesn't speak, it makes people hate whoever it is you're rooting for just based on the fact that you're trying to tear someone else down. So you don't have to tear someone else down to build up another person. Just look for what makes that person you're supporting great and just exaggerate it, emphasize on that. Don't try to look for something to put other people down. It's not fair to the person. Everyone deserves a chance at this 45 million. No one there in that house does not look like they know what to do with 45 million. So it's not fair to do to people, and um, it's not nice. Don't, don't hide behind your phones and just do damage to people's life. It's not nice, and it's not fair, especially when it comes to ladies, because we know we are very, very, very um, we're strong, but also things get to us. We might act like we, we are very, we are, we are, we are, you know, in, in control of our emotions and feelings, but um, please desist from trying to body shame people and trying to bully other people. Thank you.